Greetings, Eric back at Naturopath. Thanks for coming back to my channel. I always appreciate people checking out these videos. We're going to talk a bit about the paleo diet today, and it's particularly the keto diet. So the paleo was very big in the 90s. Many people really got into high-protein eating. They realized it was a probably a better way for them to, to move into, you know, because it made them feel full, reduced their appetite a bit, stopped them snacking on a lot of crappy foods between meals. It seemed to be very popular. But the last few years, keto now has really taken over. It's a more extreme form of paleo. So there were initially alarm bells ringing when people started to eat paleo because they were going more for high meat consumption. And a lot of people, but at that stage with the paleo diet, people were still eating you know, a reasonable amount of things like sweet potatoes or legumes. Some carbs did creep in, but carbs have become very taboo now with keto, which is definitely a high fat and protein diet. I've got a lot of concerns about the keto diet, particularly what people's health is going to be like short term. So keto is a very extreme form of diet. People check the urine for ketones, which are produced as fat is being burned for energy. So it definitely works for many people to keep their weight off. But at what cost to look sexy, to look great, to lose weight? At what cost? A recent study conducted in an Australian university in Perth, Western Australia, found that people, uh, you know, they were going into particularly the paleo diet, not so much the keto, which will be even more extreme, we'll talk about in a minute. They were checking out participants in a study, they were looking basically at what was happening to these people. 44 people on a paleo diet and 47 pe people on an Australian standard diet, which is probably meat, you know, vegetables, potatoes, things like that. So they compared it and they found quite a lot of differences. They found that the people eating paleo had twice as much, if not more, TMAO, trimethylamine N-oxide. So TMAO, it's a compound that the body builds up naturally. A high meat diet pushes a person into a high TMAO uh, production in their body. Now you can go and look for yourself online. There are many studies that show that TMAO, high TMAO levels in the body are linked up with cardiovascular disease in particular. But I think they're also linked up with cancers, uh, kidney diseases, many other illnesses are caused by this particular organic compound. Now your body makes a lot of organic compounds, but it deals with them naturally and normally when you've got a natural healthy gut, a balanced microbiome. I read some interesting studies that show that TMAO levels come right down with bifidobacteria. You know, when, so the beneficial bacteria in that gut help to pull it down. But from where I'm sitting, and I've looked at a lot of a lot of stool test results on keto diet people, on paleo diet people, on people on vegan diets, on all kinds of diets, thousands of studies I've looked at, thousands of stool tests I've looked at, I've come to the conclusion that these keto diets and paleo diets are really not healthy for you to do long term because it screws up your beneficial bacteria. You're going to take a lot of these, you know, uh, digestible fibers and resistant starches out of your diet and then pile all the meat and bacon and fat and sausages and all that junk in there. It's not really a good approach, not very healthy for your gut. Other studies have showed a huge spike in bowel cancer in young people in Western countries aged between 18 to 35, a significant spike. Now we're not quite sure where the spike comes from yet, but could it be things like eating extreme kind of diets or eating foods with chemicals which names you can't pronounce or eating foods your grandmother never heard of before? Could it be that? Who knows? This channel is about common sense. It's not about let's quickly lose 50 pounds to look sexy in a pair of bikinis. It's not about that at all. Okay, If you're coming to look at my videos to, you know, to adopt an extreme diet, to uh, extreme measures to get an extreme outcome, you're talking to the wrong guy here. I'm a more steady, slow, reliable, plotting kind of person who likes to work with people to get them in good health by common sense, natural measures, not by extreme measures. The jury is still out on keto long term, but I don't like people coming back to me years down the track saying, Eric, I went on a diet you know, uh, ABC diet, whatever it is, and I ended up with kidney disease, or I ended up with gallbladder problems, you know, or bowel congestion, things like that. Now, my suggestions on this channel will not lead you down that path of kidney disease, because if you look at my dietary recommendations, they're balanced, okay? So I totally agree with what a lot of other people say regarding keto. It is a concern. It does work, 
but we also know that many people who lose weight end up gaining all that weight back again and more and they yo-yo their weight all through their life. The best way to keep weight off permanently is by establishing a natural healthy diet that suits your needs, okay, not the keto person's needs, okay. So that's what I'm saying. It's the gut instinct you've got to think about. Does it feel right for you? You know, are your bowel motions okay? Are you getting a lot of problems out of the diet? If you're getting issues out of keto, you might want to modify it a bit. But the problem with the keto diet is, you know, you're checking in the urine all the time. You know, whether you're a good girl or a bad girl, so then you've got to take more stuff out of your diet, focus more on hardcore proteins, you know, particularly the meat proteins, so you can pee out more ketones, okay? Uh, this is what it's all about. And I just don't like this kind of approach. I really do. I'm sorry about that. But keto may be okay for a few weeks or a month, but then I think you need to look at getting back into a normal diet to balance the microbiome to get your beneficial bacteria back in there, which long term you really want to cultivate like a garden. Get it in beautiful shape so the weeds don't grow. You know, don't let it overgrow. Don't cull off you know all the look the lawn by spraying glyphosate on it. You know, meaning don't kill off the beneficial bacteria by putting diet drinks on it. Uh, but also just be careful about the high protein approach. I think the jury's still out on that one. Thanks for tuning in.